How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. God, it's Tuesday, isn't it? Holy smokes. It's Tuesday here on this program. I haven't been here since, what, Wednesday? And my God, it feels like it's been years. Hello, Twitch homies, top-tier YouTube subscribers, all of our listeners, Sports Byline, the Mighty 1090. I am back here today. Mike will be joining us after the break. And obviously, we got a lot to talk about here, don't we? So uh, I'm going to go over a little bit of the news, talk a little bit about the Double or Nothing show, and then what do you want to know about the weekend? Ask me anything about AW Double or Nothing weekend. And then later, I presume we'll do that uh, that raw report as well. Don't even don't even talk to me about Spirit Airlines. A lot of these, a lot of this stuff will be tonight on the Brian and Vinny and Craig show because we're going to review Double or Nothing weekend. And if you want to hear about the restaurant and the airlines, I'll tell you that story tonight. Only for subscribers, WrestlingObserver.com, Video.f4wonline.com, and I got a lot to say about those two things. But today, obviously, MJF. Double or nothing. Tomorrow's AW Dynamite. A lot of stuff to talk about from the weekend. Still recovering, but we're going to get into all of that here today. And then the rest of the news as well. Everyone's favorite topic, NXT 2.0 is tonight. We've got the finals of the Best of the Super Juniors tournament. we got what's going on with Jake Atlas. We've got uh, Dynamite Wednesday has noted the death of Tarzan Goto. The Raw Report, Helena Cell is coming up on Sunday, so we'll see how much we can get into here. We had a special last Wednesday, one month for $3.99, and man, let me tell you, if you miss that, I don't know what to tell you. Don't know what to tell you. But those of you that did take advantage, or current subscribers, boy, we got a lot of great stuff coming up and had a lot over this weekend. So back in a moment with more Observer Live. Show Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sabervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And uh, before I uh, get going here, very mm-hmm. quickly, I'll let you go first real fast. What's that? How's the show overall? What, this one? It was fantastic. No, I'm talking about Double or Nothing. No one cares about this show. That <laughs> was Double or Nothing. How was it, it on was... TV? Was it good? It was good. It was long, and I'm sure everybody has heard that one by now. But and so there were some matches. One could argue could have been you know set aside for Wednesday or something like that. But the show as a whole was really really good, and there was a little again a little bit of something for everybody there. Uh, everybody can pick nits over the things they liked and they didn't like out of the show, but overall, I think it was a a success. Well, should I start talking about MGF first, or what do we want to do? Uh, I heard you got beat up. I got beat up? Ah, forget yeah. about that. We got important things to talk about here today, brother. All right. All right. Okay, listen. This MJF story, all right? Listen, I want to make this abundantly clear, okay? I don't know what's going on, okay? I don't know what's going on. But I knew, I know what happened. Like, I know what publicly occurred, okay? So, there was supposed to be a meet and greet with MJF. And he wasn't there. He didn't show. And uh, and people were very, very angry. People in the company were very, very angry. So as we'll get to here, if this is a work, they didn't clue anybody into this on Saturday. Fans were furious. And uh, that, I can tell you, happened. Okay? Now, from that point on, from that point on, listen to me. There are a lot of stories out on the internet right now, okay? There's a lot of stories out on the internet, all right? Now, do I believe that uh, MJF, at some point in the past, felt that he deserved more money than he was getting? Yes, okay? Do I believe that he got a raise at some point between when he signed and today? Yes. Okay. Now, do I believe deep down that whatever he's making, MGF feels he deserves more? Of course. Of course. Do I believe everything that is out there on the internet right now about MJF? Can you tell by my face, all of you watching on video? Listen. 
I don't know what's going on, okay? I know a lot of people are, are – uh, I saw some stuff on the board. Oh, the reporting this weekend was, was so horrible. Actually, it wasn't, okay? Maybe it was. Uh, listen, here's the thing. I've talked to so many people about this story, okay? And there's, there's two things, all right? And the, either, either nobody knows or, like, every single person is – you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying here, Mike? I, I know what you're saying. Okay. I know what you're saying. I don't uh I don't trust any of this. And and listen, here I'll put I'll put it this way too. How many times has there been something that's happened in wrestling? And all the fans immediately go, This is a work. And I immediately, every time, say, Don't assume that everything is a work. As it was exactly this exact thing, thing happened with Sasha and Bailey. Like when the Sasha Bailey thing, everybody thought it was a work, and it wasn't a work. Okay, and uh, and many many times I am anti conspiracy. I am anti presuming everything. So that should tell you something. When I don't trust any of this. Okay, so I do believe that whatever is happening, you know, there was a press conference on. Uh, on Saturday night, a lot of people have talked about. And uh, and Tony was asked about MJF. And uh, and Tony Khan said, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about MJF, okay? And then a lot of people were like angry. Oh, why didn't you guys follow up on it? Okay, well, A, he said he wasn't going to talk about MJF. What do you want me to do? Keep asking? That's number one. And number two, we did, okay? We tried to get... Info on this from Tony Khan before the press conference. We tried to get info from Tony Khan during the press conference. And in fact, we asked again after the press conference. And every single time, Tony said, I'm not talking about this. Now, perhaps everybody, perhaps everybody is lying to me. But uh, Tony allegedly, from what I've been told, is not talking to anybody about this. So, uh, you know, it's funny that there's so much information out on the Internet about what's going on, despite the fact that Tony and, uh, and virtually nobody knows anything or is talking about anything. But there's a lot of information out there. Seems kind of weird. So anyway, uh, long story short, I, I don't trust any of this. I think that MJF is going to be back at some point. I believe that uh, that's what I believe. So uh, whatever you want to believe is whatever you want to believe, okay? I only know for sure, I only know for sure that he didn't show up at the meet and greet, and he did show up at the pay-per-view. He showed up at the last second, he did his match, and then he left, okay? That's what I know. Now, I'm very, very skeptical that if this is all real, Tony Khan is going to continue advertising this match until the very last second when that guy ain't in the building at 1 o'clock. But they never, from from the moment the show started, it was listed as number one, and before the show started, I mean, early in the day, like noon, whenever everybody was there at the building, the lineup had MGF going on first. It never changed. It was never removed. But he showed up like five minutes before the show. Like Tony trusted that he was going to do that, and then and then he left immediately afterwards because you know clearly he did not want to hang out in that locker room. Probably because he, you know no one knows what's going on, and uh, I don't think he wanted to talk to people about what was going on. Now, if you want to conclude that that's because well there's a serious issue going on here between. Tony Khan and MJF, then, you know, you're welcome to. I don't know. Maybe that is what's going on. I don't trust it. So that's the MJF story, everybody. Uh, He did his job. He got out of there. I don't think you're going to see him for a while. But I absolutely believe that you're going to see him again. So there you go. Smells like pro wrestling, a lot of this, but... uh, You don't say. (laughs) Work or shoot, no matter who was involved... There were no winners here. This was not a good thing. You know, sometimes the Brian Pillmans and that sort of stuff gets romanticized. And much like the wrestling, we're 30 years past a lot of this stuff. And some of that, 
those same old tricks because if this is MJF, if he, look, if this is a shoot and he's really upset, then shame on him because you don't let down the fans like that, even though you're upset with the company. You can play your gimmick. You can be as annoying as you want. You can be even extra cruel to people, and people just think that's a, a part of the game. So if he's really upset, obviously there's you know the, the issue of what would drive him to do something like that, but then you're very unprofessional in doing what you're doing to the, to the fans to try to spite the company. If it's a work for him, it was incredibly stupid by him because you really left AEW in a lurch. You left employees there that are dealing with angry fans who paid money to see you, you know, just to try to further your gimmick or try to play something off the past. I think it sucks. And if it happens to be a work with Tony Khan and MJF, yes, you can budget that money as money that, okay, we're going to do an angle here and we're going to lose this because we're going to have to refund people. But in the long run, this is something that's really going to play into the legacy. If you are doing that type of 4D chess, then you are really overthinking a lot of this stuff because if you wanted to add that to the repertoire of what MJF is and so people can look back and you work together on this, you really screwed over a lot of people. And again, it may not have any long-term lasting effects, but it didn't have any positive effects. There's nothing that says that this spike pay-per-view sales or interest on Google searches or anything like that. So it was unfortunate to the fans that were there. And however it went down, whether it be a work or shoot, a uh, work that became a shoot, a shoot that became a work, and no matter who was involved, it, I, it was not a good idea, period, point blank. Back in a moment with more, we'll talk about the whole pay-per-view, Observer Live. Mike Elbert here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I greatly enjoyed myself at that pay-per-view. But it's interesting because uh, I was sitting front row. I've never sat front row in an AEW show before, which is astonishing given I'm paid by Tony Khan. I was going to say, when he handed you the envelope, or the front row tickets in there? What envelope? What are you talking about? Tony handed me an envelope. Tony mm -hmm. Leader. Yeah, he gave, gave, you a, gave you a handshake. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I watched the show from the front row, and man, I had a really good time. And uh, I did hear that, you know, it, it is always the case, and I always mention this for live shows, depending on where you were sitting, or if you were watching it on television, you may have had a different perception of certain things. Because uh, life is subjective, everybody. But I'll tell you what I thought from where I was at. Hookhausen match, like six minutes. I mean, literally, it was exactly, exactly what you would expect. Hook and Danhausen beat Tony Nese and Mark Sterling when uh, Danhausen got the pin. Danhausen's super over, by the way. When they hit his music and put his, his face up on the big Titantron deal, or whatever they call it, the uh, AE. W Tron. But anyway, it was uh it was fine. It was a fun little match. Wardlow and MJF. So uh if you didn't see the match, which who hasn't heard about this match? Basically, uh MJF, they played his music. At first he didn't come out, then he did come out. Then he started doing the flying around the ring thing to uh mock the fans. And uh he kept avoiding Wardlow, avoiding Wardlow, avoiding Wardlow. And uh finally a little bit of heat. He goes to put the ring on, but the ref's behind him. The ref sees it. The ref pulls the ring off. MGF takes five power bombs. Wardlow puts the boot on him for the pin, but then takes the boot off at two. Gives him five more power bombs, and then pins him. And they stretch it out. MGF put the neck brace on the whole nine yards. I mean, when it was over, you know, because of the the uh, the story, the MGF story. A lot of people were immediately, oh, man, he's being written off. He's he's out of the territory. This was the like the blow off of a character, et cetera, et cetera. But the funny thing is, like, when I, I – this was exactly – and if, if you remember, everybody, we were talking about this months ago on Brian and Vinny, and my my booking was he should be powerbombed 30 times, right? Well, he got 10, and then he's out of there. So this thing started two and a half years ago. So – what did you want for the blow-off of the storyline? This is exactly how it should have ended, even if the guy is sticking around. More so, in fact, because they didn't blow off the diamond ring. He didn't hit him with the ring. Wardlow didn't kick out. 
The diamond ring and the uh, one-winged angel are the two most protected things in AEW. And, bro, if this guy's out of here and he's leaving and he's not coming back, you blow off the ring. But they didn't. So that was that. The Hardys and the Young Bucks. This was very hit and miss early, mostly because Jeff Hardy is, uh, I mean, this dude is beat up bad. And uh, the Hardys and the Young Bucks, the Young Bucks clearly wanted to go in there and give them one last great Hardy Boys match because, man, they were working so hard, particularly from the front row watching Nick Jackson in there. This guy worked for like 50 guys in one night, probably just exhausted after this match. But, man, they, they, I thought by the end they had a very, very good match. And uh, it has since been announced there was a 10-man tag that was scheduled for Dynamite uh, that featured Jeff Hardy. And uh, Jeff Hardy's been pulled from the match. So, I mean, he was hurt going into the match. And I think it's clear they're like, this dude needs time to get better. So he's pulled. And uh, it is now an eight-man. And so they also pulled Adam Cole. And uh, I've been told that Adam Cole also hurt. So both of the guys were hurt. They didn't just pull Adam Cole because they wanted to go from a 10-man to an 8-man. Adam Cole, he's injured as well. You could see that his uh, his shoulder was all taped up. So uh, whatever's going on, like he's also getting time off to, to heal. But uh, I thought the match was good. Other people did not think the match was good. So Jade Cargill and AJ, I did not think was very good. And I actually thought that Jade Cargill looked pretty good. But uh, they had a match before that was very good, and uh, I don't know what happened here. But Anna Jay looked like she was lost at points. It just, how long did they go? It went uh, seven minutes. And uh, they did shoot the big angle afterwards where we got the debut of the former Athena, or the former Ember Moon. She's now Athena. So uh, she debuted afterwards. Chris Statlander was out there. They did a Jade Cargill Statlander stare down. And after Rampage, when the fans totally turned on Ruby Soho because they wanted uh, Statlander to win, I don't know if Statlander is going to beat Jade Cargill, but when they did that stare down and, uh, and I saw the reaction to Statlander on Friday, I would not be surprised if they did that. House of Black beat the Death Triangle. This match was awesome. And uh, at the end... They finally pulled the trigger on the Julia Hart turn. Thank God. Not a moment too soon. And uh, she cost Death Triangle the match. This was one of the best matches on the show. Adam Cole beat Samoa Joe to win the men's uh, Owen Hart tournament. And Britt Baker beat Ruby Soho to win the women's tournament. I thought Ruby Soho was going to win, but clearly they wanted the Adam Cole, Britt Baker. They're a couple. They both won. Uh, they did a, a deal afterwards with Martha Hart where uh, Tony Khan basically said, go out there and talk as long as you want. I bought an extra hour of pay-per-view time. So uh, she went out there and she did this great speech and the people were chanting Owen's name and Cole and Baker are standing there like they're both heels, but they're out there and they're like the biggest baby faces getting these trophies and hugging and kissing. The fans like they're both heels, but when they kiss, the fans are like how sweet it is. And then, of course, we got Sammy and Ty, where when they kiss, that's some heat. We had, uh, and speaking of, Ethan Page, Scorpio Sky, Page Van Zant versus Frankie, Sammy, Guevara, and Ty Conti. Uh, Page Van Zant totally not ready to go live. And uh, stuff didn't look good. The guys, uh, for the most part, everything looked great. They uh, had Sammy and Ty constantly kissing to the point that Frankie Kazarian, their partner, eventually was like, dude, I'm out of here. And he goes to walk. But then he wanted to win, so he came back. And uh, ultimately, uh, Sammy accidentally super kicked Ty Conti. That was the big spot in the match. And uh, American Top Team ended up getting the win. So it's not clear, because they said it two ways. Uh, Sammy Guevara and uh, Frankie Kazarian can either never challenge for the TNT title again, or they can never challenge as long as Scorpio Sky is the champion. On Friday, they said never ever. On the pay-per-view, they said as long as Scorpio Sky was champion. So I'm not sure exactly which one it is at this point. Kyle O'Reilly, Darby Allen, They got 10 minutes. It was great. It would have been better if they would have had more time, but they didn't. And Kyle O'Reilly beat this dude clean in the middle of the ring. So I don't know what 
Kyle's being built for something. I don't know what it's going to be, but uh, he beat him clean. So I was surprised. Match was great. Thunder Rose and Serena Deeb, where I was sitting, the crowd seemed very quiet for about the first half of this match. They did get into it at the end, and it was a very good match. But uh, I heard from, like, wherever Dave was at, he goes, Oh, they were going crazy the whole match. So uh, wherever you were, you apparently got a uh, different take than, than I did. But it was a good match. Don't get me wrong. It was a very good match. Thunder Rosa retains. She is still the champion. Jericho Appreciation Society versus the Blackpool Combat Club was the craziest match you ever saw. And uh, I was front row, so I missed a lot. Because if you were, like... In the suites, you could see the entire arena. You could see everything that's going on. Obviously, if you're at home, you could see everything that was going on. I could only see what was happening at ringside, which was a lot. And uh, they had a crazy, wild, awesome brawl. They played Moxie's music two times through. And after they played it the first time through, they started playing it the second. It was like a New Jack match. And the fans, they did the biggest pop when they started playing the music again. I thought they were going to play the music through the entire match. And I was actually furious when they shut it off. But given the match went 23 minutes, it was the right call for Chris Jericho, rock star. His character hates rock music. And so he destroyed the soundboard and the music shut off. And I thought this match was probably the best match on the show. Jurassic Express versus Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland and Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. Another great match. And uh, Tony Khan mentioned in the post-show press conference, and it's true. There have never been, there's never been an AEW pay-per-view where the last three matches had this much heat. And it was a long show. And this crowd should have been dead tired. But man, there was heat for this match. And uh, Jurassic Express won. They're still doing the slow turn to the uh, the Christian turning on Jungle Boy, but they haven't pulled the trigger yet. This was an excellent match. And then the main event was CM Punk and Adam Page. Tons of heat. It, it, was, it was like there were people that wanted Page to win. There were people that wanted Punk to win. But instead of, like, cheering wildly the one that they wanted to win, they just booed the other guy. So it sounded like a match where the crowd hated both guys, but they actually loved their guy, but booed louder for the guy that they didn't want to win. And uh, CM Punk ended up hitting the GTS. He won the title for Madden Page. And despite all of the booing for CM Punk at certain points during the match, this dude won the title, and it was 100% cheers. And they went crazy for this guy, and he played his music. And FTR came out to give him the big hug. And he did a post-show babyface promo, putting over his wife and the locker room and the fans and FTR. And he left like the biggest babyface you ever saw. It was a very good main event, new champion. And, uh, man, when this show was over, I thought, it wasn't the greatest AEW show I ever saw. But, man, I had a good time. We'll talk to Mike after the break. You guys may luck out. You may not get a Raw report today. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Very quickly, then we'll go to Mike. If you go to my Twitter at Brian Alvarez, I have retweeted a link to a GoFundMe for Don West. Join the Don West tag team against Lymphoma. And uh, they had a goal of uh, $40,000. They're now at $43,000. So if you want to uh, donate, you can still donate. So head up there and check that out. And also, uh, one of our uh, Twitch homies here suggested... Since we don't have a, uh, we normally, for the Twitch, the paying Twitch homies, we usually do a post-pay-per-view show, but uh, we didn't do it because we were all in Vegas. So uh, tonight, the Brian and Vinny show will be live on all video platforms. So if you are a subscriber to video.f4wonline.com, you can watch it, uh, 9 Pacific, Midnight Eastern. And if you are a uh, paying Twitch homie, uh, you'll be able to watch it as well. And you can sign up for Twitch with your Amazon Prime account free. Uh, just go to twitch.tv slash F4W video. Uh, go to sign up. It'll say uh, use your Amazon Prime account. You say yes. You get it free. It's free with your uh, your Prime account. So do that tonight. 9 Pacific Midnight Eastern. We're going to have a party talking about this show in Vegas and <laughs> Spirit Airlines. <laughs> I did that mean mm. thing in America's restaurant. God. For once... Well, God did not bless this America. Anyway, let's do this, Mike. Anything you want to add to any of that? Well, I got a question for you, actually. Yeah, ask I me did, anything, everybody. But did not watch the 
highly controversial or whatever it is press conference, the the much ballyhooed and talked about press conference, which took place afterwards. So did anybody ask and question Tony Khan as to really why he decided to try to counter program the NBA Eastern Conference finals and add more matches because... It didn't seem to make any sense to do that. It it seemed to me that, you know, if you were going to pay 50 bucks, you were going to pay 50 bucks and either DVR the game or DVR the wrestling event and then go back and rewatch it. But I I was because Kyle O'Reilly and Darby. Well, let me ask you a question. Well, because here's the thing. Darby Allen and Kyle O'Reilly, you ask, you know, what what comes next here for Kyle O'Reilly? Seems like they were setting him up for something. I hope it's Darby Allen, because I think building up to a feud with the two, those two guys, I think would be great i don't know if that's in the cards but i i mean they work together fantastic and it seemed like something that was just thrown on there same thing with men well of the hold year on let me ask let me answer the question then go ahead so so they uh this has been done before with other sporting events boxing etc where you <laughs> okay you, we we know that we, okay. that's the excuse but his, that he gave but yes make but sense. he he said it doesn't make sense it does make sense because he said we got a significant amount of buys after the game was over. Like people did wait until the game ended and then bought to watch it live. So they get what is that? But mean, the other thing, though? what the, does that mean? On. Because a significant number of buys taking place at eleven o'clock at night Eastern time on a Sunday night on Memorial Day weekend. I mean that's impressive. That would be a game changing sort of thing if you were able to, to to jog the troops like that. So did they? Did anybody question that further? Well, I mean, he's got the numbers. We don't. But here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. What is this air on? BR Live? It's BR Live, and, and, right? And cable. Okay, but 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 online and fight it's TV, BR Live. I guess. And yes, I mean, okay. North America. Well, it's, my it's my BR question Live. is this: or fight? Is, is there's on fight? There's on fight in Europe for sure. I don't know about Canada. Okay, well, here's my question: Does it go up immediately afterwards? Because no. Okay, well, there's the thing. Like, so if 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 you wanted to order it. <laughs> And then you were going to watch the game and then watch the replay. Well, if it doesn't go up immediately, you can't, right? So just order it on cable then. Well, I don't have cable. I don't even have that option. A lot of people don't have cable. Okay. I just, the, the thought that somebody's going to spend 50 bucks for, I guess, the last two matches, I mean, that that's a, such a boxing way to think about your show then, because it's like, well, the main event is the the, the only thing on this you want to see. We are just doing a bunch of preliminaries that lead into this match that we're going to have go in the ring at 9 o'clock Pacific time, you know, 12 o'clock Eastern. And I, I just... I, again, it was that's an interesting philosophy to have, and I am very interested to know exactly how many buys they scored late because that would change. I, I to me, that's a, a mind changing type of thing to happen. So I, I'm very, I'm highly interested in that. I don't know why what the camera's at, Brian? well. The camera's been on me the entire time you've been talking. Oh, now it's on you. <laughs> anyway, smooth. Hey, listen. <laughs> All I'm going to say is this, okay? If you don't want to believe Tony Khan, that's fine. All right, I think he's telling the, that. I think he's telling I the truth. I didn't say that. I but, just I would like. Okay, to know. but here's my point, bro. You know what I've learned over the years? There's a lot the of things. Lie? No, there's a lot of things that don't make any sense to me, but they happen. Okay, dude, who in God's name sits through three hours of Raw? That doesn't make any sense, but they do. Who watches NXT 2.0 besides me willingly? Well, it doesn't seem like anybody would, but they do. Who would watch the game and then buy the pay-per-view? And the I don't know, but they do. Like, that's what I've learned. There's so many things in wrestling that when I think about it, it's like, why would someone do that? But like, they do. Like, air anything on BR Live. Something is going to have to give at some point. I had to order it on traditional cable because I had all sorts of problems with BR Live, which is not the first time. People trying to sign in, people who ordered it in advance and having all those sorts of issues. Apparently, I guess there were also issues on the cable end where even though Tony Khan, although I have not heard this, the first time I heard it was last night with you and Dave about cable companies, I guess, going off the original schedule and having that cut off at midnight. I don't see how that happens in 2022. But again, that's, you know, I'm surprised about a lot of things technologically, apparently, from this weekend. Listen. I don't want people to think that, like, I just hate WWE and I don't understand why anybody would watch it. I watch it. Do you know what I did on Friday night? What's that? On Friday night in Las Vegas, 
I went back to my room at 9 p.m. on a Friday night in Las Vegas, and I watched SmackDown. <laughs> it was either that or hang out with the great Ocon. You probably made a safer decision. That, by the way, is a great example of why would anyone do that? Well, I did. It's your job. Now, with that said. It's your said, job. Don't you? That's, you love screaming with, that. It's your job. With that said. It's, it's your job. With that said, yes. I have a great deal of respect for all of the wrestlers in WWE. Uh, they're, they do their best. They try hard. They're, they're fighting an uphill battle a lot of the time, often in ways you guys have no idea about. But at the end of the day, three hours of Raw is too much. That's the problem. But my point is some people do that. Because in this world, people do things that don't make any sense every single day. Well, let me pick a nit here for some people, but then let me, I guess, echo what a lot of other people are saying. This could have been four hours. It may have been better off that way. Some of the things, and Jade and Anna Jay, they added that late. Um, I, I get it. They added it before the pay-per-view a couple of days beforehand, even though they just they seemed like they were just going to throw it on there. But I understand wanting to have Jade on the pay-per-view. The other two matches don't make much sense because Cole and Joe didn't get as much time as I thought they were going to get. And that's a match where... You know, if you're keeping an eye, if the Eastern Conference Finals was so important, having whatever it was, 10 matches on the show originally, when you have talent like Paige and Punk, when you have the House of Black and Death Triangle, although giving them more time to do anything else probably would have been a dangerous idea. They did incredible, an incredible, incredible job. But when you have Cole and Joe, when you have Rosa and, and Deeb, when you have the other stuff, I mean, all you have to do is keep an eye on the clock if you're that worried about it and have some of those people try to go a little bit longer. But, I mean, if that if the game would have went into, like, five overtimes, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. So I'm very, I'm very surprised. I was very surprised on Friday doing this show, and I'm surprised even more coming out of this that he was so concerned with the Eastern Conference Finals. This person here says, when you go to live shows, do you cheer and boo or just observe what the fans are doing? I just observe. I'm an observer. That's all I do. <laughs> I watched Double or Nothing right after I started while the show was airing. When the actual show ended, I had to refresh, but it did pick up where it had left off. So there you go. Where, does that is that the beginning or? <laughs> I'm not sure what he meant. Uh, let's see. Should I do the raw report, everybody? I mean, we don't have a lot of time. Ooh. I mean, I was offering any other questions you guys have. What else they got? What else they got? Anything? Come on, guys. Nothing. Step it up. 425-780-7566. I don't oh, mind, my God. I don't mind talking option. raw. Oh, I thought you opened up the phone lines. No. Uh, all right. Well, I'll uh, I'll be happy to do the raw report here. Oh, boy. I'll make it quick, everybody. Well, if, uh, you have plenty of questions. Well, if you have plenty of questions, where are they? What do you want me to do about it? I gave you guys, I gave you guys notes in the beginning to, to get your questions in. Apparently like, nobody did. For real, for real. Did the great Okan make it home safely? Was there any reporting know. coming out of the New Japan camp that, that o Okan had to be corralled anywhere, roving around the desert, or he and Filthy Tom hooked up at some Actually, point in Vegas and hold ran on. down? Forget the Raw report. There was a bunch of news I didn't even talk about today. I should What's probably that? do that, huh? Probably. All right, so uh, tonight, NXT 2.0, everyone's favorite show. <laughs> we have got a championship summit, Toxic Attraction and Wendy Chu, Katana Chance, and Caden Carter. We have got uh, Cameron Grimes versus Nathan Frazier, non-title. We actually have the finals of the breakout tournament. They added that, like, earlier today. Out of nowhere. It will be Roxanne Perez versus Tiffany Stratton. Cora Jade versus Electra Lopez. And Thea Hale will reveal what school she's going to live on the show tonight. She's <laughs> just graduated high school. Hey! And now she's going to go on to, uh... Notice she didn't say a college. She mentioned uh, college applications, but she said she would reveal which school she was going to. I'm not sure that uh, Chase University is actually a college. You know, when Braun Breaker is all said and done with Joe Gacy, we're going to get a Joe Gacy in all of his minions against Chase U feud, aren't we? They would know. do that, wouldn't they? Finals of the Best of the Super Juniors, Hiromu and El Desperato. 2020, Hiromu beat Desperado in the Best of the Super Junior Finals. Apparently then we had like a, you know, pandemic or whatever, so let's try it again. That's the finals. Jake Atlas arrested in Orlando. So uh, I'm not even sure how much of the story I can even say on the air. So uh, Atlas was at a bar with friends. 
He called his partner and asked his partner to join him. The partner joined him. Atlas then said that he wanted to leave the bar to go, quote, to a female friend's house to engage in sexual activities. I don't think those were his exact words, but that is the quote in the police report right here. A few friends then relocated. Police report states Atlas and his domestic partner got into a verbal argument at the friend's house after Atlas's partner, quote, showed more attention to the female half than to Atlas. The report states that Atlas became, quote, physically aggressive and charged at his partner. A friend twice stepped between them, but after the second time, Atlas scratched his partner's forearm and tore his shirt. Police report states Atlas was given multiple opportunities to leave the scene without further incident, refused, at which point the police were called. The arresting officer stated Atlas was given, quote, multiple opportunities to tell his side. However, he was only interested in talking bad about his partner. And so uh, based on the scratches, uh, the officer found probable cause to arrest Atlas on a misdemeanor battery charge was released from jail later that day, signed an agreement he would have no contact with the alleged victim, must stay 500 feet away. I've heard nothing about uh, his AEW status. I know that they announced that he was all elite, but uh, he was not on the roster page. And uh, someone did tell me yesterday that he was actually on a, on a per-show deal, and so uh, that's why he was not listed. It was like he was removed uh, from the roster page. And uh, also there were... There were Believe it or not, and, you know, this weekend's probably the reason because there was so much going on, but there were a bunch of people in AEW th- this morning. They had no idea about this story. So I don't know what's going to be uh, what's going to be done, if anything, but that is the story on Jake Atlas. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simper, VV, also WrestlingObserver.com. Terry here says, Grizzled Young Vets, my prediction for Joe Gacy's Hooded Men. Probably right. Yeah. Makes some sense. Like, like Joe well, Gacy makes no and sense the grizzled all, young yes. vets. Golly. Uh, well, sure. <laughs> God. Oh, my man. Who hey, called Nikita you know Lyons booty Giuliani? If this who leads, If this leads to Braun, if this leads to Joe Gacy and the grizzled young vets versus Braun Breaker and the Steiners, I'm all for it. Are you serious? Do you? Re- Come on. But it's not. Man. Can you imagine Scott Steiner just punching through people? Oh my yeah, God. I can imagine that. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's Fortunately, true. then he started living the gimmick. <laughs> Remember when he drove over the uh, construction worker in Georgia? The, uh, they had the road blocked. He's like, I'm going through. And the guy said, you can't go through. And Scott Steiner said, yeah, I am. And he basically drove over him and right through everything. And then, and then that man managed to show It's okay. had been a hell of a life for Scott Steiner. I'm not sure if this person's serious or not, but they said, why is it okay to advertise Lacey Evans and she not appear? I look forward to her match and her not appearing. Dude. And a scripted show on an advertised main event upset me and numerous fans. Why is nothing said about her but oh, Sasha and Naomi Jesus. got buried? Bro, Sasha and Naomi walked out at the beginning of the show. They, they walked out of a scheduled appearance. Lacey Evans was advertised, and then Vince changed his mind and didn't want the segment on the show. If this she's has nothing heel, to do with Lacey Evans. If she's going to be a heel, can you imagine debuting her on Memorial Day as a heel? Dude, I was thinking that exact same thing. I was like, wait a second. So, but the the big question is, if that's the reason she wasn't on the show, it's like, so you didn't know last week that this coming Monday was Memorial? You didn't know that? You just found out, like, over the weekend? I mean, I put nothing past Vince, but anyway. No, he loves those highlight packages. He knew. Hey, Lance is on. It's Tuesday. He'll be on at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. We'll be talking about a lot of different stuff. It's going to be a fun time only. WrestlingObserver.com or video.f4wonline.com. Twitch homies, top tiers. We'll see you tonight. Brian and Vinny Show, 9 Pacific, midnight Eastern. Talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.